picture before they were born and found me. Use me, Lord, in thy service. Draw me closer, Lord, to the end. Speak to this, thy cold, we can hear them best. We should be able careful to give you the praise and the glory. Amen. Was in the name of Jesus, the mighty marvelous, matchless, magnificent, merciful name of Jesus, that we did pray. Amen. Song that says he has promised you hallelujah, goodness, and grace, and mercy. Oh, hallelujah. And it closes around by saying, We've been there 10,000 years, bright, shining at the sun. We know that stage. Sing God's praise when we first be God. Hallelujah. One time at a time. Thank God for his grace. Daniel chapter 5, the only God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, preach ministry, Dr. Red Southern, to those who are assembled here, in person, those who are streaming live with us, and those who shall join us later on the website. Hallelujah. Daniel 5, very familiar passage. Just been ringing in my head all over. Verses 5 and 6 it says, In the same hour came forth the fingers of a man's hand and rolled over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. It says, Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loose. His knees smoke one against the other. We jump over to verse 25, 26, and 27. I just want to read the middle of verse 25 that says, This is the writing that was written. The name of the name of Shasta. Hallelujah. Pray for me. We just want to talk about it. My mother, my grandmother, older members of my family. That phrase was uttered and meant that you could recall. The end was near. Judgment was at hand. Uh, and when I look at the word wall, I think about its significance. I remember a song that Lil Milton wrote uh, years ago. Said the walls could talk. Mm -hmm. There's just something about walls and um, things happen, um, things that are put on on a wall. You think about what would show up, what would be manifest uh, on the wall. It was handwriting, something divine. Handwriting on the wall. The walls could utter a message. What would the walls say about us? Uh, what would it tell about what we thought? What would it tell about where we've been? What would it tell about who we have ushered in? What would it tell? That's just something significant uh, about. A wall in, in secular history. There's something about a wall. The iron curtain was a wall that separated East Germany and West Germany, it separated the boundaries of communism from the boundaries of capitalism. The wall divided the power of Russia from the power of the United States. The iron curtain, the walls of Jericho, played its part. In the molding and shaking of the children of Israel's destiny, Joshua marched around the walls of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Nehemiah, the cupbearer, returned to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls. Said, "I'm doing a great work, and I can't come down." Even in Revelation, John said, "Saw a new Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down." From above and around that city, there was a wall, and underneath the wall was 12 foundations that bore the 
name of the twelve disciples, and on the wall was twelve gates lined in pearl, three gates in the east, three in the west, three in the north, three in the south, and the wall was made out of a stone called Jasper. So we look at our text today. The wall plays a significant, uh -huh. never, never, the, the primary character in Daniel. I remember Daniel. One of the Hebrew boys that, that, that Nebuchadnezzar had, had brought um, to Babylon and, and, and sought to have them indoctrinated to become prestigious in the nation, sought to feed them the good food and let them stay in the best uh, of places and train them that they might become leaders in, hallelujah, in Babylon. But they refused. Uh, not only was Daniel, there was the one who later called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but Ananias, hallelujah, uh, and the others that came and sought to be trained, but they stuck to their God. They held on to their belief and they refused to eat of the king's food and they just stuck with some beans and water. And God blessed them in a mighty way. Primary protagonist in this lesson is Daniel. Daniel, who God had blessed to be able to divine dreams and give an interpretation. Hallelujah. Nebuchadnezzar's son. Scholars say he was the grandson, but Belshazzar uh, had a feast one night. And in that feast, he invited his king, his governors, and ambassadors and their wives and they came and while they were in the middle of the feast, Belshazzar sent uh, to the cup bearer to go over in the treasure and bring out the cups that they had brought from the sacred house of Jerusalem and bring them and we're going to drink from those cups and in the midst of drinking and reveling and having a party the hands of a man appeared on the wall. Yeah, yeah. They wrote down these words, Manei, Manei, Tekel, Upshaw, and, 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 and Belshazzar got nervous, so nervous that his knees began to smoke one against the other. Yeah. He brought in his Chaldean astrologers, he brought in uh, those people that were supposed to be able to interpret things and then ask them to tell me what it means I, 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 I bless you if you tell me I, I give you gold I mean uh, purple linen to be called and I give you gold chains to put around your neck and I'll even make you a third ruler of the nation they couldn't find an answer they didn't know what it meant hallelujah hey, but that shares our wife so oh, I remember, I remember old King that doing your daddy's time. They brought in some young boys. I remember a boy uh, by the name of Daniel, who you changed the name to Bell to Belshaw. I remember him. He had a gift from God. He was able to interpret dreams. Yeah. He was able to, to, to manifest. And I, I think if you call him in, he'll give you the answer. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He went and got him and they brought him in. And Belshazzar said to him, well, if you can tell me what it means, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll grant you a blessing. I'll give you, hallelujah, third kingdom. I'll clothe you in purple garment. I'll put gold around your neck. Yeah. Then he said to him, you ain't got to give me nothing. I'll I, I, I tell you what it means. You ain't got to give me you nothing. So, but let me tell you something. Let me take you back on a retrospective trip. So, do you remember uh, your daddy never checked me? So do, do you remember how God blessed him to be a great king? Do you remember that during his reign, he had uh, the kind of instruments and he had uh, the kind of things in his kingdom that other kingdom dreamed about. In other words, God made him a great king. And, and do you remember that, that in his uh, in his pride uh, he forgot about God. 
It's time to wake up. We let too much stuff. We got in the way of it. We let too much stuff. Go accept it. Too much stuff. God is tired. God is tired. And he said, Church. Sure. 